So recently, when one of my Instagram followers was trying to apply for her UK work visa, she got asked this question and it was completely mind boggling for her. So one of the questions that is going to be asked on your UK work visa is, is da 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 job on the immigration salary list? Now, this is a very obvious question. And if you would have followed any of my videos previously, you would know what to answer. But in case you didn't, today's video is going to explain that. And this is a very important question now, especially that the shortage occupation list has been scrapped by the Mac. So if you would like to know how to answer this question and what are your chances of coming to the UK on a work visa, do not forget to watch this video all the way to the end. But for those of you all who do not know me, my name is Nikita and I make videos about life in the UK, being a healthcare professional, landing a job and all of the things related to you settling in the UK. So if you have any questions about it, do not forget to leave a comment, but also follow me on Instagram. My handle is Physiotherapy in UK. Let's get right into the content. Now, as we all know, for the past six to eight months, the UK government has focused strongly on reducing net migration. Now, this comes as no surprise because firstly, it reduced the dependence on care worker and student visa. It's also thinking about the PSW visa and it's also thinking about making rules stricter. But the biggest news was obviously increasing the salary threshold that you need in order to come for your health and care worker visa or your regular skilled worker visa. So what does this really mean? So it just means that if you are a UK employer, you need to pay the person extra money as their salary while you recruit them. Now, obviously, this was not a requirement in the past. So if I am an employer personally, I would not like to pay additionally to any person I would be recruiting. And this is the reason why a lot of UK employers now are not so keen on hiring international professionals. And this is one of the reasons that UK employers will now find recruiting international staff really expensive and this is going to put them off but what does that mean for you so before we understand about what is the impact to you directly as an international applicant to all of these uk jobs let's just understand what is the difference between the shortage occupation list and the immigration salary list so the home office in the uk decided to appoint the mac which is the migration advisory committee to review the entire shortage occupation list now for those of you all who are unaware most of the healthcare professionals fell on the shortage occupation list, making it quite easy to migrate to the UK on a health and care worker visa if you were a healthcare professional. However, once the MAC reviewed the shortage occupation list, they decided that most of the occupations might not need to be on there. Now, this was again a major part of the reforms that the UK Home Office planned to include so that they could reduce net migration. Now, as a result of this, the MAC, which is the Migration Advisory Committee, only included 23 occupations on the immigration salary list. So the biggest difference was obviously the name change from shortage occupation list to immigration salary list. But what was the most significant impact was that there were hundreds of jobs on the shortage occupation list, but now there are only 23. And now I know your next question is going to be, Nikita, what are the occupations on the immigration salary list? So to answer your question, I'm going to put up the screenshots right here. So just to answer your question, as you can see over there, you will have a certain occupation code. And now this code is really important because when you fill your skill worker documents or when you fill your health and care worker visa requirements or the form, you will be asked under what occupation you are going to be working. And that's where you need to include this code. But as you can see right there, some of the occupations on the immigration salary list include managers, but mostly for forestry and fishing, also chemical scientists, biological scientists, social and humanity scientists, graphic and multimedia designers, lab technicians, pharmaceutical technicians, artists, dancers and choreographers, musicians, art officers, agriculture and fishing trade officials, welding trades, boat and builders, stonemasons, bricklayers, roofers, carpenters, construction and building trades, care workers, senior care workers, animal care services, fishing and other elementary agriculture. Now, this is to say that only three occupations from the healthcare professionals are on there, which, like I've said before, is lab technicians, care workers and senior care workers.
Now, like I said before, the most important thing on this particular document, and I'll leave the link for this in the description box below, is remembering that there is a code that is associated with every profession or with every occupation. Now, why is this important? Because like I said before, if you are filling up the form, you will be expected to put in the codes. But please remember, guys, that this coding has now changed. So in the past, we were following the 2010 coding system, but now we are following the revised 2020 coding system. So if you are confused about what is the code for your occupation, I would highly recommend checking out the link in the description because that gives the exact codes that are going to be acceptable when you are filling your skill worker visa or your health and care worker visa forms. So now your next question is going to be Nikita, thanks for introducing those 23 occupations, but what does it mean for me to be in an occupation code which is on the immigration salary list? Well, good question. So let's answer it right now. So if you are on the immigration salary list, what is happening is that employers can pay you up to 80% of the standard or the going rate that is currently present. So say, for example, if I am recruited under the immigration salary list, my regular income is meant to be £100 for the day, for example. But an employer is allowed to pay me £80. Now, this is considered a massive benefit from the employer's point of view because they are able to recruit international healthcare professionals who they can pay lower salary rates. Now, again, don't get me wrong. This is still above the minimum wage. So you will be paid anything above the minimum wage. But why is this helpful? Is because the employers consider this as a benefit of recruiting internationally trained professionals to complete roles within the UK where obviously there is a shortage or a paucity of certain professionals. Another massive question that I know is on many people's mind is why is this helpful Nikita because obviously we are being underpaid. And the answer to this question is simple. So if you are a care worker or a senior care worker, especially if you are looking for a way to come to the UK on a work visa, this is the most easiest option for you. But if you are a UK employer, you wouldn't want to pay somebody an equal amount of money for that particular position. So they would rather hire people from the UK and train them up to be a care worker or a senior care worker. But because the government is giving them that 20% discount, that is they are allowed to pay you 80 percent of the standard going rate that is an incentive for them in order to recruit you train you and make you a care worker or a senior care worker over here now again there have been really strict guidelines on the care homes because there have been many scams going on regarding care home visas and things like that so i would advise you to be very aware about it if you are being approached by somebody who is ready to offer you a visa offer you a job in the uk please be a bit skeptical. Go ahead and check whether they are actually allowed to be sponsors in the UK. You can again do that very easily by going through the sponsor list in the UK. I'll leave the link for that in the description box below. But please guys, be aware about it because I know of people on my Instagram account who've reached out to me saying that they've now come to the UK but they do not have a job or they were only hired for like a week or a few weeks and they obviously paid massive load sums of money which can be anywhere between 10 to 15 lakhs in order to get a work visa and come to the UK but right now they don't have a job and are finding it really hard to sustain themselves so please do not fall for these scams guys now another question that I know is roaming in many people's minds is there were so many healthcare occupations on the shortage occupation list there were nurses doctors physios occupational therapists speech and language therapists dentists blah 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 why are they not on the list anymore is the demand not existing? Are these job vacancies not real? Well, the simple answer to this question is because all of these occupations are in line with the national pay scales. Now, what do I mean by that? So if you are in a healthcare profession, say, for example, if you are a physio, OT, speech and language, nurse, etc., you will be paid based on the band or the level at which you're being hired. Now, this can go up right from band five to band six to band seven. And obviously, there are increments based on what band you are. And if you want a detailed explanation about this, do not forget to check out this video where I've explained it right from scratch. Now, again, this video is a bit old, so I will make a revised video on what are the current pay rates for healthcare professionals on different band levels. And if you would like that, do let me know in the comment section below by commenting band. But just to explain this clearly, 
all of the healthcare professionals and teachers are on national pay scales and that just means that they are being paid higher than the minimum wage that is going out there now again it might not be quite as high as you would expect it to be when compared to the minimum wage but it is still higher and therefore the mac which is the migration advisory committee has decided that maybe these occupations do not need to be on the shortage occupation list or the new immigration salary list because these occupations already have a going rate of a higher value as compared to some of the occupations that are on the immigration salary list for example carers and senior care workers if you've got this right you've clearly understood that there is still a demand there is still a requirement for healthcare professionals in the uk and it's absolutely untrue that nurses physios ot's doctors dentists etc are not required in the uk so please go ahead and make that application guys especially if you are tethering on the edge of it now again if you need help with making those applications do not forget to check out my entire playlist dedicated to it but don't forget to book a one to one session with me especially if you are feeling disheartened and would like me to review your applications for you i'll leave the link for that in the description box below again now just to give you a bit more clarity we're going to go back to that table that i showed you earlier in this video where obviously the occupations of the immigration salary list were listed down now just to draw your attention there are obviously two columns on there one is the standard rate and the other is the lower rate now in what cases does the lower rate apply this is also very clearly explained on the gov.uk website and i'm just going to leave the link for that but i'll also share the screenshot right here so it just says that if you qualify for a lower rate you should look at the lower rate column you qualify for the lower rate if you are applying under the health and care worker visa in certain occupations you have got your certificate of sponsorship which is your cos before the 4th of april 2024 or if you have got your cos for your first skilled worker visa before the 4th of april 2024 and have continually held one or more skilled worker visa since then so for example you've got your carer visa right in 2024 maybe january and now you're applying for another care worker visa because you've changed your job the lower rates are still going to be continued to apply for you so that just means that you can take benefit of being on a lower rate that is your employer needs to pay you slightly lesser which might be an incentive for them to hire you now, I hope this video has made sense and if you have any questions, do not forget to leave them down in the comments below and I will get back to them.